Hey you guys, it's Amy Gretchen. Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this simple letterpress card. Yes, I said letterpress, so it's not just stamped on there, it's actually pressed into the paper. And I did that by using these Glimmer Hot Foil plates. So these plates are actually meant for Spellbinder's Glimmer Hot Foil machine, but I do not have one of those machines. But I thought I would try it with my die cut because I thought that I could get similar results with ink. And so I went ahead and tried it, you guys. It is awesome. I know it, you really probably have a hard time seeing that it's pressed into the paper, so I'll try and get that in the photo. But you, this looks super amazing, and I'm, I'm super happy with the results here. So I actually put this card on my Instagram, talked a little bit about it, and some of you were interested in seeing how I created it. So I thought that I would do a video for you today. And I did buy some of these plates, very similar to this, but in a Christmas theme. So I thought that I would just show you how um, I'm gonna be using them in my December daily. So let me go through the list of supplies that you will need to do this. Hopefully you guys will have most of this stuff in your stash. So the first thing that you're gonna need is some paper. So this is actually pre-cut cards and this is a letterpress paper. And so this paper is a lot thicker. It actually reminds me a lot like watercolor cold press paper. It has that thickness to it, has some texture. I really actually love this a lot. But you're gonna wanna use some type of paper, like a letterpress paper, because it allows for the plates to press into the paper without ripping the paper. And sometimes cardstock will just rip. So that's why I use this nicer paper. And I will, I can't remember where I, I've had this in my stash a long time, but I will look for something very similar, probably, Amazon probably has something and I will link it down below. If you guys happen to have some paper, you could just go ahead and try it with regular paper and see if it cracks or anything like that. But I just really love the look of letterpress. Plus I think that it has a really beautiful finish. The next thing that you're gonna need is some plates. So I have these Glimmer Hot Foil plates um, I also, and so the whole reason I got this idea is because I had bought this a long time ago when it first came out. I was super excited about it because I've always, always been in love with letterpress. And I can't remember, was it the L press? I can't remember what this was called. I was kind of bummed because you can see that it, it broke like, honestly, it broke like the second time I used it. So I was really bummed about that but it had these plastic plates that you could use. So these are very similar to this. I think the black, or excuse me, the metal might be a little bit, actually no, this might be a little bit thicker, these plastic. But this actually worked really well for letterpress because it had these guides here and um, then this flipped over kind of like the Misty. So it actually did work uh, pretty good now that I'm thinking about it, but I came up with another way of doing it This is where I came up with the idea to actually get the glimmer plates because I had these plastic ones And I remember making some cards with it that I really really loved So you're gonna need some plates you if you have some of those plastic ones You could use those plastic ones with this then you need a die cut machine. So I have my old uh, Sizzix die cut machine that I keep wanting to replace but it's not broken so I'm not going to because I'd rather buy other things. Then you're going to need the platform. My platform comes with both of the platforms together so if you just have, if your platforms are separate you want to use platform one because you're going to be using the mat here. So you're going to be using this rubber mat so that the plate squishes into this instead of a hard plate you know you want to have some give so this is how you would use it if you were going to use probably like an embossing folder so then I need two of my cut plates so I'm gonna just set one down and then put my rubber mat on top and the best way that I found to do this is actually do it right in my die cut machine so that I don't have to keep moving this platform on and off it just there's less move, there's less movement here. And so I'm just going to use it right on my die cut machine. And then when I 
then when I'm finished, I'll end up putting this on top after I put my card down. So I want to explain um, what these markings are because I actually made a lot of mistakes, of course. So you can see that I actually have um, a ton of mistakes. I don't know how easy they are to see. I'm having issues with this um, wanting to focus. But this one I pressed a little too hard. These ones, um, like this one, you can see that it kind of jumped a little bit so I inked it twice. So anyway, just a lot of trial and error. So I ended up making these markings on my mat because I have two so I figured I would have one for cards and then I can have one for other things. So what I ended up doing was I thought that the side here and the top here would be the top and side of my card. So the outside of my card and then the top of my card. So I figure if I align them here, then I can get my sentiment to, to go on the card straight. And then I needed to know to be able to get the sentiment straight. So I wanted it to be centered horizontally. So that's why I drew a line down the center. So this portion right here is essentially the size of the card. So if you look here, from edge to edge, this is the side size of the card here. So I know if this card is up against this side that it's at least gonna be straight. And I wanted to make sure my sentiment would go on straight. So what I end up doing, and I'll use the birthday one here, I take my sentiment and I'm just gonna add some adhesive to the back. And I wanna make sure that I rub the side so that there's no sentiment sticking off of the edge and then I'm going to center it on to my mat and I just want it to go directly onto my mat. I had tried actually how I was doing it at first is I was putting this down and then I was taking inking this up and then setting it down and it was kind of a disaster because this is just too small maybe if it was a bigger plate but this was just too small of a plate to get in the right place and Anyway, it didn't work at all. So I thought putting the down first and then putting the card on top would be the better way to go. So I'm just making sure that uh, that is in the right place. And then I'm gonna ink. So I wanna get a scratch piece of paper and I need to get my ink. So I don't think I talked about the ink. The ink I like to use this, these are both from Allie Edwards and her ink is more of a pigment based ink and I like to use the pigment ba based ink because it kind of sits on top and it allows me time to get my card ready and it doesn't dry or anything like that. I think the dye ink would work just great. I also think pigment ink looks just a little bit better but I don't know. I haven't tried it with dye ink so you might like it better with dye ink. So try what you've got. I think they will both work, but I just like the pigment better. I'm gonna stick this scratch paper right up against that plate, and I'm gonna lightly tap. And it's awesome that I have this pink color because you can actually see it on the plate where that yellow, this honey man ink that I was using, really had a hard time seeing. And I wanna make sure as I'm tapping it that I'm kind of tapping it towards the paper so that if anything does, if I get anything down, it'll be towards the paper. So I'm kind of just at a slight angle there and I can see, I think I got a little bit of ink right here. And so I'm gonna do that S one more time. So if you just keep it actually straight and do a couple taps, it should be good. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I wanna make sure, I want the sentiment to be here because I'm gonna fold the card, right? So I need to make sure that I go to the left and I'm gonna line left and I'm my paper's kind of at an angle here just so that I'm not touching the ink at all. So I'm aligning it left and I'm aligning it top and I'm gonna put my head in the way so I can see. And I know if I get this side aligned that the top will be aligned. And then I'm just gonna set it down really carefully. And then I'm gonna get my top cutting plate and then I'm gonna set this down really carefully. And then I'm gonna push it into place 
and I'm going to roll it through. Here, let me take this out, and then I'll finish that thought. So I'm just going to lift this up. And you can see how awesome that was. It could have been inked a little bit better on the B, but it is really, really great. I really love how that looks, you guys. Really love how that looks. All right, let me try one more time, just so you can see. It's really easy once you get going. It goes pretty quick. So let me get my paper. And I'm going to really look this time to make sure I've got enough ink on all the sides. And that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to line my card again on the left and on the top. Carefully put it down and then put my other cutting plate on top very carefully and then I'm gonna move it through. Now what I was saying before is when I put a die through the die cut machine it's actually kind of hard to roll it through. This is not hard to roll it through. It's, it's really easy if you can see. It takes no pressure at all. When I'm doing a die it's like really hard. So then I just pull it out and I'm going to lift both the card and the top plate at the same time. And that was even better. That was an even better impression right there. Oh, you guys, I love the way this turns out. And I'm really excited to play with this with my December Daily. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, but I will definitely be uh, using these plates for December Daily. So anyway... That's it, you guys. That is how you make these uh, really cool letterpress cards. So if you are interested, definitely grab some um, plates. They have a ton of different styles. They don't just have words and sentiments. They have designs. They have a ton of Christmas stuff, too, if you are thinking about maybe wanting to do something similar for a December daily. But it's a lot of fun. It really is a lot of fun. I should have tried doing one with some cardstock to see um, how it reacted to cardstock, but man, you guys, I think this is super, super cool. So, all right, you guys, thank you for being here. And uh, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comment section below and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.